Welcome back to the Escape Pod. Thank you for escaping with us. That's Alex. I'm Andrew. And as always, with great power comes great. We're back ability, baby. Yeah. It's, so, you know, you guys have only not seen us for a week, but we haven't done this in probably a month. Yeah, it's been um, at least two or three weeks. It's been two or three weeks. I was out of town, everything, so we yep. filmed a bunch. So, unfortunately, our latest episode, I'm kind of low energy because it was like <laughs> our seventh episode filming that day. And you were tired and you hadn't eaten. And, and I had a tummy ache and then I yep. ate on the pod, which was a big no-no for you. I was really he mad. He has said since then, in cl behind closed doors, that yep. if I ever ever eat on the pot again, yeah. he will kill me. <laughs> I, Which, I, I literally said, and quote. Empty threats at this point. Yeah, yeah <laughs> true. But I said, if you're ever tired or eating on the pot again, I will refuse to film. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. So, so yeah, so we're back. Yeah. And so if you didn't like the last episode, well, you're in luck. You're going to love this one. And if you did like the last episode, you're in luck. You're going to love, love this, this one. one. Yeah. yeah, let's go. All right, we're off and rolling. High Low Buffalo. This is a game you came up with? Yeah, before we get into that, we do have to talk about the Patreon. Yeah, screw me. Uh, we have to get our, you're the one that's always like, we got to oh, talk gotta about the, the Patreon. Patreon. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, we're sign doing, up. Yeah, sign up. We do an extra episode a week. Yep. I'm also going to start doing lists on there. Yes. Everybody's asking for my lists because everybody thinks I've got the craziest takes in the world. So... Uh, we're going to start out with all every Star Wars project ranked Ever. according yeah. to me. Okay, those TV shows and movies? TV shows and movies. Ooh, okay. Everything that I've seen will be on there. Yeah, I'll, no throw, I'll throw up some lists as well. Yeah, but he'll throw up a list, but I'm they're probably not paying a, for, baby. Yeah, they're probably not as psychopathic. You get extra episodes. You get a movie night. We're going to do movie night next week, I yeah, think. Yeah, we, we've got our movie night coming up. We do one movie night a month with yep. the patrons of that tier yep. and above, and... Uh, we're doing that this coming week. Yeah, probably, this probably, Wednesday. probably cars too. Unfortunately, yeah, that's what they're voting on, which is great. Finn McMissile, British intelligence, Tomater, average intelligence. Yeah, <laughs> all right, we're off and rolling. Button. Now we're doing Button. Ajax from Deadpool. Nice, Batman. Okay. okay. Um, uh, yeah, High Low Buffalo. You want to explain because this is your yeah, game. Yeah, so we do news. Um, uh, you know, obviously, we film weeks in advance, so. Probably should it be coming to us for news. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, here we are. <laughs> so, so High Low Buffalo is our new news kind of segment where instead of just doing, oh, look at this that's going on, we've got, we each got three bits of news or something going on, just something we want to talk about. So it's high, you talk about something you're happy about. Mm -hmm. Low, you talk about something you're upset about in the news. And then Buffalo, just something you right. want to talk about. You just need an excuse to talk about it. Cool. So uh, if you want to start, let's sure. do it. Yeah, so we're going to start with highs, yeah. I believe. Uh, highs. I, I, no, I think we should just bang it out. Oh, I do all three? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, yes. I could freaking make out with this <laughs> post. I don't know what that was. <laughs> I was trying to mimic you. You do shit like this all the time. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm Andrew. I Woo! I don't know if I do that. Okay. Um, Guardians, uh, obviously doing very well at the box office because it's freaking amazing. Yeah, it's a good movie. It's a great movie. Um, so it has already beaten Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania <laughs> in like two ten weeks. Days. Yeah, ten days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy. It's, it's com completely beaten the entire run of Quantumania, yep. and it is the like. Okay, so I read that the second weekend. You know, I saw this. It's the lowest drop off in a, of a second weekend from in the MCU for the last five years. Yeah, yeah. The next closest was Black Panther. Yeah. Uh, so normally movies drop anywhere from fifty to seventy percent after the second weekend. Um, or the yeah, and then this dropped only forty seven percent. I saw that. Yeah, so, that's really cool. Doing very well. Yep. Uh, low again. This isn't going to affect us as much because we're not super big the Flash fans. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't think that that's what we were going to talk what, about. What were you thinking? I thought you were going to talk about the same thing that I've got low, but you'll see later. Okay. All right. Uh, but I was like, wow, we're really on the same page. Carlos right? Valdez, I think is how you say his nope. name. Nope. No idea what you're talking about. Continue. Oh, he plays Cisco. Okay. Who was one of the main characters. But he said that he couldn't do the last few episodes of The Flash because of scheduling. He's like been a character since episode one, basically. Oh, and he's like a main character? He's like Barry's like best friend. Like he's one of the team. And he, he's just not going to be in it? I guess. He said, honestly, there was no way to make it happen, which was really heartbreaking to me. So again, I know we don't watch it, but like... One of the main characters. Uh, the show ending is a low for a lot of people anyways because it's such a great show. And now apparently he's not going to be there in the last few episodes. I don't know if they killed him off or something. He's not going to be in there anyways. But I just thought that was Seems like a sad choice. Okay. Buffalo. Eddie Murphy. I saw this. Yeah. Is in talks to do like a half animated, half live action Pink Panther movie. I saw this. Is he going to be Inspector Clouseau? I don't know. I'd be down for that. 
You know, a lot of people give Steve Martin flack. Why? He did great as... I love it. Oh, he's great. I love those movies. Yeah, no, Like, great. uh Steve Martin is awesome. The, the best. But a lot of people give him flack. Like, that's, like, not how that character is traditionally done. Yeah. But I don't care. Those movies Who are Who cares so how... What do you <laughs> Inspector think of, Clouseau is traditionally done. What do you think of Alfred Molina in a tutu? Alfred Mo- Oh. He, in the second one, he's one of the inspectors they put together, and it's like yeah. the greatest inspectors in the world. And he's like, if you solve this case, I'll be in a tutu. And then in the end of the movie, it's just Dr. Octopus in a tutu. Uh, yeah, I think I've seen a picture of that. Yeah. But. You haven't seen that movie? I, I've, I've seen, I don't know if I've seen all of them. The first one's the one with Beyonce. I think and I've seen the that. the second one is, there's only two. The yeah. second one is the one with like Andy Garcia. It's very fun. They get like all the top inspectors. Yeah. and it's, it's Maybe just, we'll watch that with the patrons. That would be great. I would love to do that. Yeah. All right. What are yours? All right. Uh, hi. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave Filoni's Mandoverse movie yeah. has a title. Ooh. Heir to the Empire. Ooh. Which is the, the books that you like. That's Mara Jade. That's like oh, those books. So we're going to get something new. I hope not. I hope we don't do Mara Jade. Don't do her. But I think it's cool. It's Thrawn, right? So it's Thrawn. I just thought that was cool. It does make me think, though, as I'm I'm very high on it. Obviously, I'm bringing it up for high. It does worry me, though, because it's just going to be Ahsoka then. Like, it's not. There's going to be no man, though. love Ahsoka. I like Ahsoka. I, I don't love her in live action. I love her in anime. We'll, well see. Well, what if Ahsoka's really good? If Ahsoka's f- fantastic, then I'll be super excited. I just don't know. Yeah, we'll see. that makes me excited just because like, oh, it's Star Wars and we're getting something new in a movie. Yeah, sure. Which we got with a little bit with Rise of Skywalker, but all right, go ahead. You gonna apologize for that? No, you're the worst. Uh, Lo, this yeah. is what I thought you were gonna do. Uh, the writer strike. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, pay those people. No, yeah, they make your movies. We live in Hollywood. I had a friend who lives right next to Universal. Like, couldn't get home. Like because of the like so, like all the roads were shut down and stuff. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, just pay, pay them. Yeah, you're most, making a gajillion dollars. Yeah, I haven't really seen anyone be like, pay oh, the they're writers. they're being stupid. <laughs> like, yeah, no, pay the writers. Just pay the writers. Just, just do it, just, so that we can get good stuff. Just let's not go back to do it. What was it? Two thousand nine was the last one when we got Quantum of Solace and Re- Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen. Like very bad movies came out in that era. Just don't do it. Or keep with the writer strike and call us. Huh? Because if you want to pay me... The Escape Pod podcast? To write your movie. I don't... I don't. No, absolutely not. Nobody wants you writing Jack, all right? I don't want to write. I want to make that clear. I might give you a Superman movie because you're okay on that. <laughs> but, like, don't touch Star Wars. Stay far away, please, for the love. You'll get a Last Jedi Part 2. I... Absolutely. God. <laughs> I, um... Yeah, I, I do want to make this clear because this is something we get some comments on and stuff. I don't, neither of us want to write movies or direct movies. No. Or, I don't have really any desire to be in one. And yeah, I, I just, we just like movies. Yeah. I, I just feel like every other podcast is like, watch my short film. Yeah. We have no interest. No interest whatsoever. <laughs> no interest. I have friends that do short film. I'm like, good for you. Good for you. Yeah. Not I'll for go me. do my podcast. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. All right, give me some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Clink on that. Boop. All right. And then my uh, Buffalo. This is something I've been wanting to talk about for a while. Casting rumors. Yeah. They're kind of all over the place. Every day I hear that Adam Driver's going to be Mr. Fantastic and Margot Robbie is is Invisible Woman and Mila Kunis is the thing. I saw that. Hey, calm down. Yeah. Calm down. Chill your face. We don't know. Don't freak out about anything until... They're at Comic-Con, and Kevin Feige's like, and Mr. Fantastic. Here he is. David Montgomery, right? Like, <laughs> like, like, We like, can only hope. Quit freaking out about shit that isn't real. Every day, and look, you can send us whatever you want on the Instagram, on the Yeah, TikTok, I like to look at it, but us, like. whatever, whatever. But like, message us, we get a ton of DMs. What are your thoughts on this hypothetical casting? But at the end of the day, it's hypothetical. Let's stop freaking out about this. For five years, we were fan casting Benedict Cumberbatch as Thrawn. Thrawn. Guess who's Thrawn? Just the guy that played Thrawn. Not, like, already. Not Benedict Cumberbatch. Like, right, like, what do you think about, like, uh, 
one of the biggest things I had ever seen where people just got like way ahead of themselves was all the Mephisto stuff. It was yeah. just constantly, yeah. not a casting rumor, but yeah, something. that's a little different, but yeah. I know what you mean. Cause like theories are fun, but like, they were like everything that ever came out that year was like, Oh, this is Mephisto. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the WandaVision stuff, though, it, I think it did. Me and Rachel just, we were on a plane together, and we literally were re-watching WandaVision. Phenomenal show, by the way. Um, and it really does point to it being the fit. I mean, the, the devil's in the details, Babs. That's not the only place he is. No, I get it's like a regular joke and whatever, but, like, that probably should have been Mephisto. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe they were like considering it and then decided not to. I, I, maybe I also, but you know, Mephisto is the rumored villain for Ironheart. Of course he is. Which is, <laughs> which is dumb. dumb. That's a dumb one to do. And yeah. you know who the rumored casting is for that. Here we are going here back we, to here that. Here we are. Sasha Baron Cohen. Oh boy. That'd be interesting. Very. In it's a I meme. have seen that one as well. It's yeah. a meme, Mephisto. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a meme of all right. Right. So. I don't know. We'll see. I'm anti-casting rumors as a whole, though. Like, look, I, look, Nicholas Holt, he'd be great as Lex Luthor. He would also be great in not as Lex Luthor because he's already great. I don't care. Let's wait for the casting to be official sure. before we freak out. Yeah. That's just my cool take of the day. All right, what do we got next? That, that's good. High Low Buffalo. Let us know if you want us to keep doing that or let us know if we're bums. They'll probably tell us both. Probably. Our patrons make sure to know, let us know that they love us and hate us. And Very true. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great. All right. Uh, we got, you want to do some, speaking of patrons and fans and stuff, you want to answer some questions? Sure. Let's do it. Oh, let me get the mug. The mug. Button. Catwoman. That's what I was going to say. Doomsday. But Here we go. Teddy Westside. What are your, are, are we reading their names? <laughs> you don't want to. We'll read the patrons' names. We'll read the patrons' names. Oh, wrong mug. All right. They're very similar. I don't blame you. What are your thoughts on Peter Quill not having his Star Lord helmet in Guardians of the Galaxy Three? I didn't like it. I didn't like it, but also at the same time, all these people were like, "Oh, it's a big plot hole or whatever." It's like, no, it's not. He just didn't. He just didn't bring it that time. Like, it doesn't bother me it's that much. It's not a plot hole, and it doesn't bother me, and it doesn't like hurt the movie or anything like yeah. that. But. I, so I saw a lot of people being like, it was destroyed in Guardians 2. I was like, oh, but it's it, an Infinity it was War. destroyed in Guardians 2, but it is an Infinity War. So, Which is like a little continuity I mean, it's fine. thing. He just got another one. And then, yeah, it was just in his box. Yeah, or maybe he I don't like care. it got destroyed or something. We just didn't see it. It's not like, like if for some reason just Drax wasn't in the movie, that'd be like, where's yeah, Drax? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a thing he has. It's like, fine. I, I didn't. Yeah, get over it. But it would have been cool because the suit is like really well done. And yeah, it's just like perfect. that iconic look with that helmet is, yeah, I would have preferred if it was in it, but it doesn't ruin the movie for me. Uh, a patron, boss, boss athlete 4969. Okay. Uh, thoughts on Venom, Let There Be Carnage. You hate it. I do not like it. And it's a shame because it's directed by my boy. Do you know who directed Carnage? No. Andy Serkis. He directed it? Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, 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 So I, it's a shame, but I... Mainly because of the Carnage thing. I thought it was fine. It really, really, really bothers me. I'm going to give a little context. Can I have a minute? Yeah, you've talked about this. Carnage in the comics, right? So Venom, first of all, Venom's a villain. Stop making him a good guy. Yeah. Anti-Venom. I... Agent Venom, make those guys here. Right. Here's the thing. Not Venom. I do trivia... About and I ask people like, oh, name some Spider-Man villains, or I talk about it, and people say Venom, or I say Venom. I get so many comments from people who have just seen the movies that are like, Venom's not a villain; he's an anti-hero. I'm like, shut yeah, shut up. up. He was a full villain for he's a long time, and he's one of the best. I mean, he's yeah. one of the best Spider-Man villains. Yeah. Him and Carnage are like very. So, cool. so here's the thing. Eddie Brock is a good guy that has had bad things happen to him. So he's just kind of makes bad decisions. And then the symbiote, Venom, is bad. Okay? So constantly, they are at odds in the comics. They like, they, yeah, right? In the comics, Carnage is Venom's son. Carnage, bad symbiote, because the symbiotes are bad, bonds with Cletus Cassidy, who's, who's a... Crazy. He's a serial killer. He's a just absolute terrible person and so instead of butting heads 
they are a perfect match. And that's what makes them so dangerous in the comics. And in the movie, I hate that he has a girlfriend. I hate that he has any care for anybody. He should just be a crazy, bloodthirsty murderer. Um, but on top of that, now he does work with Shriek in a comic, but they're not f***ing or anything. I just, I don't, I don't like that at all. So that was my second biggest issue. But in the movie, Venom and Eddie literally defeat Carnage because they aren't a perfect match and Venom and Eddie are a perfect match. And I hated that. Yeah. That really bothered me. Yeah. I thought Woody Harrelson did a good job though. I did not. I also wanted Carnage's voice to be high pitched. Mm. And it was low, like yeah. Venom's. Plut- I'm going to read Plutonium Parker. Not a patron, but that was that's Brooke from... I know Brooke. Yeah. Rewatch Guardians 2 after seeing Volume 3. Is it better now or worse? We haven't rewatched Guardians but 2 But we are yet, planning on it. But we are planning it, maybe with the patrons. Um, and we'll let you all know. Oh, my boy. Patron boss athlete 4969 yet again. Would you rather have an actual good... Uh, Rise of the Resistance type Avengers ride or ride about the OG Star Wars movies? Okay. This is a great question. I have an answer. Ready? Star Wars has Rise of the Resistance. It is one of the best rides ever. Now, it is themed sequels. I would have preferred, instead of there being a Kylo Ren animatronic or whatever, and for Finn to be talking to me, that I'm talking to Luke, Leia, Han, and there to be Darth Vader obviously but even still when i went to ride that ride opening day absolutely blew me away there is not an avengers ride that does that the guardians ride both guardians rides both in florida and disneyland are apparently amazing i've only ridden one of them the spider-man ride was like okay to me but there's no avengers ride whatsoever so because we already have one for star wars i would take Give me an Avengers. Can you imagine an awesome Avengers ride? Can I? I'm going to rebuttal you real quick. Okay. Like you just said, Mm -hmm. it's unfortunate that Rise of the Resistance is the sequels and this and that. If we were to get an Avengers ride Mm -hmm. on the level of Rise of Resistance, it would not be Iron Man. It would not be Captain America. It would probably be Captain Marvel, Shuri. I don't. A bunch of people you don't like. I just want to make. I that don't think they would do statement. that. I don't think they would do You're that. You're not bringing back Robert Downey Jr. You cannot. Yeah, in he's a not, ride. In a he, ride. He's yes. not coming back for a ride. In a ride. He's yes. not coming back for a ride. I guarantee it. If they did an Avengers, it would be Sam Wilson, Captain America. Yeah. If they did that, that would be stupid. No, but this is my point. Yeah. So, so, so what? If if the options were an Avengers ride with the the newer characters and not the OGs, as opposed to another Star Wars ride, I might go another Star Wars. That's what well. I'm thinking. I just think that if they were to do a heavy duty Avengers ride, I think it would be Sam Wilson, Captain America, Captain Marvel. I don't even know who else. I think there if they is. if they, I put, guess you'd get Thor. I mean, they always go back and do rides for like older things at, at theme parks. Like they don't always have to I'm do the newer saying. stuff. I think they'd be stupid not to do. You're not getting Robert Downey Jr. and Chris okay. Evans, I promise you. Yeah, but you don't have to get them to act in the ride. Like, you can have Iron Man and, and stuff, I think. Oh, there's, that's true. There's ways to do that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm going Star Wars, Patron, probably. Patron alert. Cool. Onion. Oh, is my is boy. My boy. Is Finn McMissile not, 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 the goat not? No. Finn McMissile's the goat. There you go. Also, are Peeps the best Easter snack? Certainly. They're the only Easter snack. Jelly beans. No. Uh, What do you guys think about Fast X being a three-part finale? I didn't even know that. Is that a real thing? Yeah. That's hilarious. You've seen it. I haven't. I have seen Fast 10. What do you think of Fast 10? Fast 10 is a fast movie. All right, good. It's good. It's fun. There's ridiculousness, which is what you want. I will say... The only thing you get in that movie that is not in the trailers is Jason Momoa's performance as a villain. Is it great? He's great. I don't oh, think good. he should do anything but be a villain ever again. Really? He's the best part of the movie. And you don't get a lot of that in the trailers. Everything, all the big explosions and helicopter takedowns, everything, 
everything that's cool in the movie except maybe like one thing you already have seen in the trailers but you have not seen Jason Momoa just be this crazy psychopath that's great and that's fun I love Jason so Momoa. I like that and yes it, I am excited that it's a two part and three part now this isn't the end I don't want Fast to end just keep giving it to us <laughs> It's, the, it's such a ridiculous thing to make the last three movies a three-part series, but what else do you want from Fast? You know what I mean? So this is like a cliffhanger. It's great. Yeah. Oh, Bring it on. Good. Yeah. Uh, here's a question for you guys. I think that either Kung Fu Panda or How to Train Your Dragon are tied for the best animated trilogy. What are your thoughts? Do you like these movies? Is this a hot take? Loving the pod, by the way. I don't know. I wouldn't classify it as a hot take. I wouldn't either. I think that... I disagree, probably. I think I do disagree. But, like, what do you have? So you have Toy Story? Yeah, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Those are two really good animated like, trilogies. I really what like are Despicable other Me. animated trilogies? I really like Despicable Me. The second one is garbage. The third one's okay. The first one's great. Kung Fu Panda, the first two are great. Third one's okay. So I And How to Train Your Dragon, all three of them Did are Did you good. hear about what they're doing for Kung Fu Panda 4? No. The villain is going to be called the Chameleon, and he's, oh, I did. He's going to be villains from Poe's past. That has the potential to be spectacular. All Kung Fu pandas do. Just, just please do that. No, well. if someone came up to me and was like, "My favorite animated trilogy is How to These Train Your both Dragon," good picks. I, I would not be mad at this. This is not a hot take, and it's a good take. And frankly, yeah. I like it. I think I might. Uh, I don't know. Shrek? I don't even know. I would not pick Shrek. Was wondering if you guys have a Patreon or something like that where your fans can support you. And if not, would you like? Would you be willing to set one up? I think we've answered that one four times already this episode. That was, what are you doing? Wow. Yes, we have a Patreon. <laughs> what, did you think I just up. planted that? It's great. Yeah, I don't know. I was like, I, did somebody really say <laughs> no, that? No, yeah, someone definitely said that. What are you guys drinking in the Spider-Man mugs? Do we tell them? Maybe we'll tell the face. Patron alert, Mr. Shadows. Is there any actor or actresses that you would have recast for certain roles that could have played the roles better in the MCU? Aquafina. <laughs> it's a good default answer. Um, do you think someone could have done Hawkeye better? No. No? I like Jeremy Renner. I mean, I do too. I like I, the writing is the issue for that character. I mm. don't think it's... <sighs> This is tough. I mean, they're already recast Hulk. And Ruffalo's ex Ruffalo's phenomenal. definitely better than Norton. Um, I think they did a pretty the good job. The casting in the MCU is so good. Do you like him as Adam Warlock? I think it's the writing. I think he... Uh, yeah, I don't... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't... I don't. Comment below if you'll have... If they've you'll done have some... a spectacular job. Uh, if life were to be a video game or the Matrix, what cheat code would you use? I want to walk through walls. You know how you can, like, there's a barrier and now you just yeah. walk through it. I'd like to be able to fly, maybe. Is there a cheat code that I can put in to know my future wife? You know what? Uh, you know what cheat code it would be? Every Pokemon I would run into would be shiny. <laughs> Uh, what order would you recommend a brand new aspiring nerd to watch films slash shows? Start with the MCU and release order, then watch Star Wars. What order? Then watch DC films. What order? Don't watch the MCU and release order. You, there's so much you have to skip. Absolutely not. I disagree this wholeheartedly. This is a, one of your worst takes. Wholeheartedly. The whole wholeheartedly. MCU is not necessary. Absolutely. You can frick right off. If this was if this was hot takes, I would break and start punching you. You're out of your mind. You, it is the best cinematic like like experience you do and not, story. You can Don't interrupt me. You can skip shut all your freaking of, all You of have a mouth. Run. You have a mouth. Shut it for like 30 seconds. Please. The MCU is potentially the obviously the big one of the biggest, but the best put together cinematic experience that you can ever have. You get phase one, phase two, phase three. It all ties together. All the movies released in a specific order for a specific reason. They all have in credit scenes and they do all of that. They're not all the best, but you get something out of all of them. Thor of the Dark World. Oh, it's not the best, but you get the introduction to the ether, which is the reality stone. It's freaking awesome. You're not going to get the whole experience unless you watch all of them in release order. Do not do chronological order. That's bull crap. No, don't do chronological. Do it in release order, but just you can skip all of phase one start with Avengers. What? Do not. Do not okay, I, I'm, I'm. That's speaking. how Rachel and I watched it. That's how I showed it to Rachel. Listen to me and right she's now. She's perfectly fine. Listen to me right now. Do not listen to this man. 
Phase one is great, and it gives you some of the best origin movies for any superhero movies ever. You get a, People don't like Thor, First Avenger, but they're good origin movies. The first Iron Man is great. Second Iron Man is good, too. You get you get that, and that all leads perfectly into the Avengers, and that's why the Avengers was great. Avengers is not great unless you have those other movies. Frick you. What was the other ones we had to give an order for? Well, it just said... Like, what should they start? Should they start with MCU? Should they start with Star Wars? Should they start with DC? My answer to that is just start with something. Don't do DC. Don't do DC. Because it's a disaster. So it's like, like, don't do X-Men. Those Mm -hmm. are also a disaster. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like literally with DC, like just start with Superman in 2025. You know what I'm saying? Oh, right. Yeah. Like when that new universe, right? Star Wars order. What you doing? It has to be release order. Clink. You, I, 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 this is one of my strongest opinions. If you show somebody that has never seen Star Wars mm-hmm. and you start them with Phantom Menace, you are robbing a potential Star Wars fan of ever liking Star Wars. Because if there are going to be... a uh, I love Phantom Menace. I get a lot of hate because people think I'm a prequel hater. I love the prequels. I grew up with them. I'm the same age as all of you. I love the prequels. Phantom Menace is probably the Star Wars movie I've seen the most. I love, love, love the prequels. Just they're bad movies. And we have to admit that. We can love bad movies. I love Cars 2. It's probably a bad movie. But like, right? So, if you show, if you've got a girlfriend and Star Wars is really, really important to you. And you show her Phantom Menace to start, and she doesn't like it, that is entirely on you. The amount of comments I see, oh, I showed my girlfriend Phantom Menace and she didn't like it. Oh, my girlfriend won't watch Star Wars. She she fell asleep during Phantom Menace. No sh- because it's a bad movie. She may like it if you show her the original trilogy and she's like, oh, these are great. Now I want to know what happened to Darth Vader. You have to do it in release order. New Hope, not only is it the best or second best Star Wars movie. Not only is it the most important movie literally of all time, but according to the box office, if you adjust for inflation, is the second biggest movie of all time for a very specific reason. Nobody had ever seen anything like it before and everybody was like, oh my gosh, this is the best movie ever. Start with that. Introduce your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your sister or your brother or your son or your... Introduce the person to Star Wars with the thing that introduced Star Wars to the whole world. Because we all like Star Wars because we all started with New Hope. Yep. Whether you started with New Hope or not, it doesn't matter. Start with New Hope. Yep. It's, 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 it, 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 again, it's, it's, if, you if you show, show somebody, somebody Star, Star Wars, Wars that has never seen, seen Star Wars, you start with Phantom Menace, you're dead to me. That's one of my strongest opinions. Okay. Young PK Calvin, the patron. My boy. Question for both of you. Along the lines of how speedsters would obliterate people by moving them, a train running through Robin in the Boys, etc. Oh, A Train. A Train, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Running through Robin in the Boys, etc. Should Star Wars ships be decimating everything in their path when traveling at light speed? Okay. I really like the Holdo scene in Holdo maneuver. Last Jedi. Great, great question. So there's two things about this. Is there's the people in the ship, should they be dying? And is there the ship hitting stuff on its way. Two things to this. I, I, yeah, okay. I think we're going to agree on both of them. So number one, the, the, the humans, I have legitimately thought about this because again, the speed of thing is something that bothered me. So I have thought about it. Um, but I think it's different from a speedster grabbing a human and moving them that fast as opposed one person just jerking them that fast as, as opposed to you sitting in a technological spaceship with shields with and shield. shit. Yeah, like, yeah. like some sort of technology there. And then they even talk about the, the um, hyperdrive like computer and stuff like that, that is having to calculate yes. where they're going. Yes. So it has to do that. Be- what? It has to do that before they actually, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> they, it has to do that before they actually shoot off into hyperspeed. Yep. Um, so they don't hit anything. I'm pretty sure they address yes, that. that they, they absolutely address that. So I don't think they're hitting anything. Right. Um, because if they did, it would be the Holdo maneuver. Yeah. And so then, she did that on purpose. Yes. And then for um, for the people in there, if you're going in, a, if you're in a car, mm-hmm. and and you throw up a ball, 
in a car. It comes right down to it. It comes right down. It doesn't, it doesn't even in a plane. Back of the, yeah. Even in a plane, right? In a plane, you're going like 500 miles an hour, 400, 300, whatever it is. You're not. Yeah. Because it's pressurized and whatever yeah. the fuck it is. Yeah, there's science. some science. But so it doesn't bother me. Neither of those bother me. Yeah. But like science in Star Wars doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like the ships aren't aerodynamic in the slightest. The bombers, there's no gravity in space. Yeah. And they're dropping bombs. But who cares? It's yeah. Star Wars. Also, a lot of people have the issue with the bombers in The Last Jedi. Do you? That the gravity, there's no gravity in space. It doesn't bother me. There are bombers in Empire. Yeah. The TIE bombers that yeah. are bombing the asteroids. So it's like, fuck yourself. Yeah. Mr. Dylan 831 what was the movie you saw for that first kiss? Oh, this is for me. Uh, yeah, what was that? It was a re-release, a re-release, theatrical release thing for Beauty and the Beast. My girlfriend at the time, oh, her favorite movie was Beauty and the Beast. Oh. So we went to see that. That's a beautiful movie. I love that movie. I know you guys aren't exactly video game people, but would you guys be willing to play the Wolverine game? If so, would you guys put it on either the YouTube channel or Patreon? That's a very good question. The f ad for that game, the trailer, gave me goosebumps. It's cool. I was like, damn, that looks That's Wolverine. sick. That's Wolverine. So... Maybe. Potentially. I'm, I'm just I, not a video game guy. I'm trying to stream again. I used to stream very consistently, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to do a bunch of games like The Last Jedi and maybe the... Not The Last Jedi. Jedi Survivor. And Jedi, Jedi Fallen Order. Jedi Survivor and The Last of Us is what I was doing. Um, and like Fall Guys and stuff like that. Um, I just haven't had time yet. So I might do the Wolverine game, or we might do it on the Patreon. I don't know. There's no set plans for Let either. Let me tell you, nobody wants to watch me play video games. Unless you want to see me be bad. I'm very bad at most I'm, I'm pretty bad. I'm very good at Smash. That's it. Yeah. Jimmy OC. Patron. Question for Alex. War for the Planet of the Apes is your second favorite movie. Where do you rank the previous two in that trilogy amongst your favorites, if at all? I'm a huge fan of all of them. The other two are, without question, in my top 100 favorite movies of all time. Yeah. They're probably in the top 50 range. Like... 50 to 70. Yeah. But, and, 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 and I do want to make this clear because I did get a lot of flack for this. Dawn is probably the best one. The middle one. Mm -hmm. Especially after rewatching them with you. Yeah. Dawn is probably the best one. With, but War is my... That's Koba, right? Koba. Yeah. But War is, your fav is my favorite. I, like, that is the best theater experience I've ever had in my life. Because I loved the... That's crazy. The first two... I loved so much, and that I was just a mess that whole movie, crying my eyes. And I, I, I think that they put together, like all the best stuff. It's it's kind of my no way home. But so the other two, Dawn is probably the best one. Mm -hmm. It probably goes Dawn, War, Rise in terms of good movie. Obviously, it for me. And it Rise goes, was so good. Yeah, yeah, Rise is phenomenal. But the, Rise is an eight out of ten. Yeah, but I think nine out of ten and whatever. So I, I like War better, but um, the other two are better. Probably they're they're as good, better, whatever. But they're just I don't love them with the same love I have for War. It kind of I loved that trilogy when it was just the two, and just the two, both of them were probably my top thirty favorite movies of all time. But then War came out, and it like took all of my love of the trilogy and encapsulated it to one movie. Yeah, and great. I like the other two less, I guess now. But yeah. it's, that's gr what it's great that you can you you got to have that. That's what movies are for. You exactly. Know? Yeah, Young P. Calvin. Patron. Yep. I'd love to hear your thoughts about James Wan versus Mike Flanagan, two great modern horror oh, filmographies oh. that I consider among the best. This is an excellent question. It's a great question. So, I haven't seen enough Mike Flanagan stuff. I know he did House of... The Haunting of whatever. Hill House. Yeah. He also did Gerald's Game. He did, which is on Netflix. Have you seen it? Mm -mm. Carla Gugino is in it. It's really great. And it's that's good. Um, he, he did a bunch. Did you see Oculus? No. Have you seen Hush? She's deaf. Yes. Oh, that one's so good. Yes. That's him? Yes. Oh, now I don't know. Yes. I great. That movie's great. So I want to preface this by saying mm. Mike Flanagan is a spectacular horror director and anything his name is attached to makes me want to see it. That being said, this is a very easy James Wan answer for me. Yeah. Why? 
Saw is Saw. one of the most important horror franchises, period. And the first one is spectacular, and yep. he's responsible the for that. The story behind the first Saw is so awesome to me. And he made it for like $10,000. That's what I'm saying. Like, it was the, one of the cheapest horror movies of all time, and it became a cult classic like that. He spent like $10 million on it and made like 900% back. Yep. It was crazy. And all the problems that it had. Like, they had to film... They filmed, like, all of it in, like, a weekend, basically. It was, like, basically like a short film that he turned into, like, this amazing... Just because the story and creativity was there. Yeah. So, he's certainly more important to horror than Mike Flanagan. Yeah. And then, on top of that, the Conjuring franchise is really something else. Yeah. Good question, though. Oh, so good. And I will tell you, I'm like the biggest Aquaman fan I know. I, was I don't say. think it's like spectacular, but I really, I like it a whole lot more than a, a lot of my friends. No, I and like it. The creature of the Black Lagoon scene is spectacular. The the fish mm -hmm. where they're in the dark mm -hmm. and then he like turns and they're on the boat and there it is. And it's like James Wan, like just that scene in that superhero movie is just like straight James Wan, just an insidious I mean, he's just spectacular. Yeah. And he, he's he's a big part. I haven't seen Malignant. I've heard great things, but mm -hmm. so I need to see. I've either heard it's the best movie ever or the worst, so yeah. i got to see it for myself. And then he's like a big producer on, like, Megan. And, like, newer horror, yeah, like, he, all the time he's he, a part of. He, like, his, yeah, his, his his backlog, his resume. Like, if you're, if you're talking about who's the better or more iconic horror director and one of them has Saw, Insidious, and Conjuring, it's like, all right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's so, I mean, just... Like, like, The Nun and Annabelle were such brilliant ideas by him that they got their own movies. Yep. And then they sucked. Yeah, they're not great. But well, The Nun sucked. The first Annabelle or two was okay. Annabelle or 1 is bad. Annabelle yeah. 2 is good. Okay, yeah. I can't, I'm not sure. Annabelle 3 is really bad. <clears throat> uh, can re you review the D&D &D film soon? Really curious as to what your opinions are on it. We uh, loved it. Yeah. We loved we it. We really loved it. We got... Yeah, we got to go Two see it early. Yeah. Um, on the set, I thought it was great. It's a real shame it didn't make any money because it was. It didn't. Darn. Oh, it made no money. Hey guys, go see it. Go. S no, it's not out. Well, rent it or something. Buy it. Yeah, Buy it. it's yeah. so good. It maybe because everyone had such low expectations. The but marketing was a disaster. The marketing was a disaster, but it was like, so good. We went to see it because I like. I got invited to like a thing and, and. Well, I really wanted to see. it. Yeah, and I was like, let's go, and uh, yeah. we went in and. Then I'm a huge Chris Pine guy. He's the, my favorite Chris. Chris was great. We Everyone out. in the movie was great. We walked out and we were like, oh my, oh my gosh, gosh. That was so that much was fun. So good. I, I saw it multiple times. Three, two, one. Eight out of ten. Oh, yeah. 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 Eight, eight point five, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. It's my second favorite movie of the year. Behind Guardians? Behind Guardians. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think it's my third or fourth. After what? I liked Mario better. No. I liked Air. I haven't seen Air, yeah, but I really want good. to. Really uh, no, the 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 whole heist thing in the movie, the so acting, good. the comedy was. It's so it's funny. So funny. Chris Pine does such a great job. They all do such a great job. It, from the it was just interesting and entertaining. From the opening scene with Jonathan. Oh my gosh! Is Jonathan gonna get here? I really would like to speak to Jonathan. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is gonna be great. And like the scene where he's projecting. <laughs> No, brrr, yeah. <laughs> it's so good. And the whole scene where he's asking questions to the dead people. Why, why did you say what? I didn't. <laughs> and they just keep dying on him. So good. So good. Yeah. Uh, Mr. This is our friend Daniel Duenas. Which fictional character? Which fictional characters are Riz immune? Like don't have Riz or cannot I, be seduced by I Riz? I think it's more that. Spock. Okay. Not a Star Trek guy. I thought about this earlier. There's a couple. There's got to be a Star Wars droid. Maybe K2SL? Maybe. The Joker. You're not risen up the Joker. No, Joker does cuz Joker doesn't care about anything. No. Yeah, so some like psychopathic characters you could you could get on there. Should be Cletus Cassidy Carnage. Right, yeah, yeah. But oh, I want to think about that more. That's a good one. Comment below some Riz immune characters. Um, Groot? Me? I could see Groot f***ing, though. Yeah, I don't know. Groot's a dog. Yeah. Yondu seems kind of Riz immune. No, Yondu's f***ing. He's, like, with that... 
mm. prostitute at the start of Guardians 2. Oh, okay. Who is your favorite movie composer? Okay, John Williams. Obviously. Is the top. My second might be Alan Silvestri. Really? Just because... There are two obvious picks for second and third place. and I'm sure there are. Michael mm. Silvestri is not those. Alan Silvestri. Same. The only reason, me personally, he did The Avengers. He did Lilo and Stitch. He's done another movie that I really liked. And there was one time, there's a funny story, Haley was watching a movie in the living room, and I was in my room, and I was just editing, and I heard the movie, and I immediately got up, walked to the door, I said, are you watching The Avengers? She's, and I looked up, and it was Night at the Museum 2. I said, hold on. And I looked on my phone, and Alan Silvestri did the music. And I said, this is why I did that. And she was like, you're crazy. <laughs> That's fascinating. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'm full of shit. I just... I mean, he gave, like, I don't Hans, know if he's solely responsible for the Avengers theme, but... Hans Zimmer has got to right. be up there. Yeah, and then that's fair. Michael Giacchino has really put himself in that conversation. My nose is itchy. Do you know who Michael Giacchino what is? What do you do? All of the Pixar movies that are relevant. do 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 Yes, do, and do, do. Inside Out, and Incredibles, and Cars 2. do 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 And he did The Batman. It's good stuff. Yeah, he's he's a killer. Kiss Mary Kill the Three Spider Mans. We are killing. Ready? Three, two, one. Toby. Toby. We are marrying. Three, two, one. Andrew. Probably. I just don't want him to kill us. True. We'll be Mary Jane though. We won't be Gwen. And then we're gonna get the radioactive semen thing figured out. True. Yep. Which superhero's powers would you want to have? I'm just going to be Spider-Man if I can pick. But in terms of like actual life, I want the Flash. I was going to say the speed seems so convenient. Yeah, for sure. Would you rather watch Infinity War for the first time or Endgame? We've answered this. You want to do Infinity War. I want to do Endgame. Right? Sure. Yeah. Nice. And that's the end of the fan segment. Woo! Thanks, for the, thanks for all the questions, guy. All right. Oh, nice oh, job. You've destroyed what? the set. We, were you ready for our... Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry let about it. Let me fix... Just let me... Oh, my gosh. Just let me fix it. Just... Let me... Okay, that's <clears throat> not where it goes, but it's fine. What? Where does he go, brother? He goes next to Yoda. And you hook him on Here? Thor's, yeah, on Thor's, yeah, hammer. It's, it's Stormbreaker, I actually think. It's just hook him on Stormbreaker. There you go. Can you check the camera while you're up? I I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> I fixed All right, it. you ready for our new segment? Uh, We're going to do this once a week. What? I hate, I love and hate when you come with things that I don't know. No, this is a good one. You'll like this. It's the Hat Guys Tweet of the Week. We're talking about a tweet I saw that I think creates a fun discussion. Okay. All right. You saw. So this isn't like a tweet that you made. It's one you saw. I wanted to It's discuss. one I saw. Okay. <clears throat> so it's from... Uh, Putruck, P-U-T-R-U-C-K. His at is at Big Putruck. Great. Makes sense. But then his name is just Putruck. Really great tweet. Got a lot of comments, got a lot of likes and stuff. It's crazy how Zoe Kravitz was in four of the best comic book movies. And the ones pictured are obviously her as Catwoman in right. The Batman. Mm -hmm. Her as Angel in X-Men First Class. Mm. The one with the wings. Mm -hmm. um, her as Catwoman in the Lego Batman movie. Oh, I didn't know. And that. her, she's Mary Jane in Spider Verse. Oh wow! So I'll let you see all these ro yeah, yeah, roles. Yeah. And so I wanted to discuss that. I think that this is a really, really interesting discussion. But I feel very strongly that 
those other three movies don't really belong in the same conversation as Spider-Verse. Obviously, I've been very bo- vocal. I think that Spider-Verse is the greatest animated movie of all time. Yep. I think it's the only it's the only animated movie I've ever seen that I've given a 10 out of 10. It's clearly the best Marvel movie ever made for me. Um, I just like... I think that there's a conversation for best superhero movie of all time. And I think the conversation is Dark Knight and Spider-Verse and that's it. So I think that that one is a little bit ahead of the others. Right. That one's definitely a, a but tier I, or two above. But I adore First Class. Yeah. I give First Class a 9 out of 10. Let and then, yeah. And then obviously you, everybody knows my opinion. I think that the Batman is good, but I think it's quite a bit overrated. And then I don't love Lego Batman. Right. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, I like. I guess this doesn't bother me as much because I like the Batman and Lego Batman. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like all three of like everything, I, the main point they're making, like obviously Spider Verse is a, a tier above. Yes. But I think what the point he's making is like all four of these are. If people, most people are talking about like top ten, fifteen, top twenty, right? Those all are on probably the, all in the conversation. And I, I don't think a lot of actors or actresses could say that about the top twenty. Certainly not until Zoe Zaldana is in DC. Because she's been in all the good ones. Yeah, I mean, people like Robert Downey Jr. He, I mean, and and yeah, but he just has Avengers. I right, guess Avatar what... isn't superheroes though, so maybe yeah. I'm foolish. Yeah, I like that. Cool. Yeah, I thought that was an interesting discussion that I wanted to have on the pod with you. So yeah, I like new it. segment. Hat tweet guys, of the week. tweet of the week. All right, we're gonna do Would You Rather actually. Yeah. Okay, so we both came up with a couple. You want to start? Yep. Okay, so you're just gonna ask me a Would You Rather question. Yeah. They could be nerdy, they could be not nerdy, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Just to create discussion. Would you rather, I know I just talk about casting rumors and how dumb they are, and this is what this is, but I think this is funny. Would you rather John Krasinski and Emily Blunt Ooh. as Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman? Yes. Or Adam Driver and Margot Robbie, which is the predominant rumor right now? I want the first. So this is interesting. I do not. I will tell you why. I think he's bad in Mom. I don't necessarily think he, it's his fault, but I don't like the lines. Oh, is the greatest threat to the multiverse is, is you, Steven. I just don't like the way he acts. But I thought it was really cool that they did that. It was like the Red Skull moment in Infinity War. It's like, here you go, nerds. You guys have been wanting this guy to be Mr. Fantastic? Well, we didn't really like him for Mr. Fantastic, but here he is as a variant. Yeah. I think that that's cool. I don't particularly love Adam Driver as Mr. Fantastic. That's that's my main thing. But I don't I don't want it to be John Krasinski and Emily Blunt. I just like both of them a yeah, lot. Yeah, they're great. And I definitely wanted it to be them before Mom. And then when it was him and Mom, I was like, woo! Like, no way home. But yeah. then that movie was bad. Yeah. All right, you go. I'll do a casting thing. Would you rather <clears throat> have Henry Cavill back as Superman in the new DC universe or he's the main Superman? Yep. Okay. Or Timothy Chalamet as like Nightwing or like an older Damien somehow or <gasps> some sort of Robin main character in the Batman movies. I've had enough good Batman. You're fine with so you're picking Timothy I'll, I'll Chalamet. I'll let Timothy Chalamet ruin as, the Batman movies. Then I don't want Henry Cavill to ruin another Superman series. He's not. Henry Cavill is awful. Wow, that was a good one. Damn it. <laughs> All right. You just I exhausted you. <laughs> I hated that. I don't even want to think about that. I wasn't prepared for that at all. All right. Uh, would you rather? This will be a good one for you. Would you rather have me? Nope. Do the soundtrack for every MC, MCU movie ever. Like, all the soundtracks are re- replaced with me and my voice. So, so Hooked on the Feeling is me. Hooked on a feeling. And then the Avengers is me. I'm picking whatever the second option is. Or. This, this sounds like. Or me. No. Do the soundtrack for The Greatest Showman. And it's replaced, and I'm singing the songs. And it's all me. It's all a cappella. It's all me. Button. Yeah, freak you. <laughs> yeah, freak you. You're going to take away 
Why? Yeah, the MCU, all of it, or The Greatest Showman. I can't. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum, bum. You're picking two of the most influential songs to me ever. From now on, from this movie, and yep. almost all of the other ones. And I'm also, I've never gonna... seen that movie, so I don't know what the songs sound like. So I'm actually going to sing it. I'm going to get given the lyrics, and I'm going to be singing whatever I think it would be. So I'm going to go for What happens it. in the scenario if I kill you? It's, it's, then, I, then it's both. <laughs> I can't let you have Greatest Showman. Wow! I can't do it. All of the MCU! Wow, that's a good one. I'm really glad I did that one. That was a good one. Yeah. I'm, All right. I'm in pain. All right, you got one more? Yep. All right, let's hear it. Would you rather change slash fix the ending of Shang-Chi or the ending of Deathly Hallows Part 2? Shang-Chi. Deathly Hallows Part 2 is already an excellent I'm not, movie. I'm not talking about the rest of the movie. I'm just talking about fixing the ending. Deathly Hallows is already an excellent movie. Deathly Hallows is a 9 out of 10. It doesn't become a 10 out of 10 by fixing the ending. Yes, Shang-Chi goes from being like a 4 out of 10. That's so ridiculous. To maybe a 5 out of 10. To being maybe a 7 or 8 out of 10 if you really do the ending properly. You need to cut... You, you, you're, you're no, have those, it, you have those movies flopped. It would be, it's the exact opposite. It would be opposite. probably... The, the highest it could be is probably a 7 out of 10 because Aquafina is just so grating in that movie. But if you let me take away Aquafina... No. ...and change the ending of Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi could be like an 8, 9 out of 10. Stupid. Yeah. No, Deathly Alice Part 2 is already a near masterpiece. It doesn't need to be fixed. Just the ending. Ridiculous. All right, that was fun. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do... Um, Let us know if you want us to do those in the future. Yeah. All right, what are you going to do? Are you excited about Miami? Yeah. They just won again, Yes. right? Yes, so we won last night. So we're in the ECF. We're in the Eastern Conference Finals against the Boston Celtics. ESPN gave us a 3% chance to win that series, and we won game one in Boston. Wow. Yeah. Um, and you were d- y'all were down... We were down 13. To start. At the half. <laughs> yeah. What is up with you in the second half? I saw, I saw a, a statistic, and it was um, uh, the, the Heat win 70% of their games this postseason when trailing by 10 or more at some point in the game. Crazy. Which is crazy. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm really, going to start a... Really um, happy with them. And obviously the Florida Panthers, who are my hockey team, are also in the Eastern Conference Finals, also as an eight seed. So both of my teams, huge, huge underdogs, shouldn't be where they are, and here we are. And my Marlins are having not the worst year in the world, which is impressive for them. I went to a game while I was there, and we won on a walk-off home run, which was really fun. Wow. Unfortunately, the tickets are $8 to get into the stadium because the Marlins are so bad, and it's such a garbage franchise. No one cares. I'm going to own the Marlins and turn them around. It's my goal. We need more patrons for that. We certainly do. <laughs> um, I'm going to do trivia with you. Let's do it. What is it on? It's going to be about Guardians 3. I'm asking you Guardians 3 trivia questions. Don't put your phone down. Put your phone down. Give me your phone. What are you doing? Button. Five, four, three, two, one. David Give- Montgomery. He's not a fictional character. What are you doing? Okay. You looked up something. Yep. You looked up Rocket's number. 89P13. No. I needed that. I didn't know that. That's cheating. Well. Oh. Yeah, also this. Again? Water this gun. Is such a tired gimmick. We did this for two episodes. Or did we only do it for the first episode? I think episode? we only did, we did it 17 episodes ago. Give me a break. Okay. That's fine. Who dropped the first MCU's F-bomb? Chris Pratt, Star-Lord. Who, what are Young Rocket's three friends' names? Lila Teef's Floor. What was Adam Warlock's mother's name? Aisha. What is the name of the song that plays at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy 3? I want who it's by but as well. You're talking about Dog, Dog Days Are Over? Yes. I have no idea who it's by. I'll give you a little squirt for that one. Oh! 
Where are the paper towels? You don't get any. Uh, it was by Florence and the Machine. Yeah, no, not. What is no. Rocket's number? 89P13. What is the name of the location the team retrieves the passcode for Rocket? Alter Earth. No. What? Damn it! Damn it! Where was it? Well, first they go to the Orgoscope. That's not where they get the password, though. They get the password from the guy's head. Either way, you're wrong. Well, what's it called? I'm not telling you. It's another question. Who plays the lead security officer at the Orgoscope? <laughs> oh, Nathan Fillion. Yes. Oh, thank God. I thought you were talking about the Asian guy. I got so scared. The Asian guy? The guy with the head. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <sighs> Who is able to speak the kid's language on the high evolution? Rex. Yeah. Uh, what Jube, Jube. Jube, Jube. That was the other question I was going to... Uh, what country sent Cosmo into space? Russia. The Soviet Union. Yeah. Who all is present when Rocket finally wakes up? Quickly now. Groot. Can you give me a number? F*** you. Groot, Star-Lord, Gamora, Nebula. Damn it. Ah! Who was it? As soon as Rocket wakes up, he goes, where's Nebula? She's on the ship. It was just the first three you mentioned. You went too far. Shit. Thought you would get that one. Damn it. What is High Evolutionary's response to the line, you must stop for God's sake? Uh, uh, there is no God. That's why I stopped it, stepped in. Correct. What is the name of the world High Evolutionary created? Damn it. <laughs> that's where they get the passcode, though. Five, four, three. Alter Earth. Damn it. Ah, what's it called? Counter Earth. Damn it. <laughs> All right, three more. I didn't think you'd be getting this wet, to be honest. What is the name of the creature sent to kidnap Rocket from the Guardian ship? What? What did you just say? I didn't think you'd get that wet. That's what she said? Sure. Sure. Just, well, just pointing it out for Onion. Oh, gosh. Or Jesse, or whoever. Or whoever wants to edit me out of context. Um, Name of the creature that goes to get Rocket from the Guardian ship while on Counter-Earth. War Pig. That's correct. Bang! Two more. On Counter-Earth, there is a statue reminiscent of the Statue of Liberty. What animal is part of that statue? Oh. <laughs> A rabbit. Damn it. Ah! It's a monkey. He's, there's a monkey on his oh. shoulder. Last one. Man, I <laughs> I put like three in here that I thought were hard, and you missed a lot more. What is Rockets? What is Young Rockets' first spoken word? This one's hard. But I just drink from there. Fly. What is it? Hurts. That's right. I knew that. Damn it. You are dripping, my man. I know. I typically am. Not that way. In the way with my life. We live together, though. You see me all the time. I'm dripping. No. Okay. <laughs> I got a shower after this. I smell like piss. Last thing we're doing. Oh, I need my, my laptop back. <laughs> Whoopsie. Nice job. Whoopsies. I'm in a bad mood. Why? Because I sprayed you? I'm very wet. You should have gotten more of the trivia, right? Do you not like Guardians 3? I've only seen it once. I saw it two weeks ago. Ahem. Ahem. So we're doing a... What was that look? What was that look? You just rolled your eyes at the camera. Yeah. That was disrespectful. Yeah. Because I hate you. Uh, what's, uh -oh. what's a su 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 uh, surprise? Why'd you say Nebula was there when Rocket woke up? You should have known that. Uh, I, uh, 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 that's what you sound like. Oh, that was gross. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to make something out of uh, that. I know they are. You can't be upset with me and roll your eyes at the camera when I'm sitting across from you and I gave you wildly easy questions. 
Don't get mad at me. We're doing a bracket of fights. Who would win in a fight? We did DC last week. We're going to do Harry Potter this week. We're going to do a different franchise each week until we decide to do a big mega bracket. And we're going to take the top four from each bracket and do a mega bracket. Okay? Ha-ham! Button. <laughs> Yay! What were we on, E? I mean, you never did C or D, really. But yeah, E. Mm, we did C, because it was Catwoman. Mm. We never did D. So it's D. Doomsday. Oh, that's right. You did say D. So then we're yeah, on e. e. So E. Electra. Okay, I would have said Ego. All right. E, F. Franklin the Turtle. He's a character. Yeah, he is a character. Yeah, screw you. I thought you were going to say Franklin Richards. <sighs> okay. We don't need these anymore, right? I don't know. You got water all over the table. I got water all over the table? Yes. You forced my hand. First up, <laughs> Dumbledore versus Luna Lovegood. Yep. Dumbledore. Yep. Cool. Here we go. Severus Snape, Ron Weasley. Severus Snape. Why do you think about that? Just, 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 just think. You're just soaking it in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one, Andrew. Nice job. <laughs> Literally. Uh, Bellatrix Lestrange. Nope. Why? That's not her name. Bellatrix Lestrange? There you go. What did I... There's no shot you made me repeat it because I mispronounced it that minusculely. Yep. You said ch. Instead of tr. You are... Tricks, not ch ticks. Bellatrix Lestrange. There you go. Mad-Eye Moody. It seems like it would it's, be tough, but it's an easy answer. It's tough to get rid of Mad Eye this early, but it's no question Bellatrix. Absolutely not. You haven't read the Harry Potter books. What are you? I've read all seven of them twice. Clearly Ma not. Mad Eye Moody is one of the is the most famous R of all time. But his entire job is finding and catching dark wizards. Who, Bellatrix who, loses to a mom. Who, she loses to Molly, who is not. Who wins one on one? Mad-Eye Moody or Voldemort? Voldemort? Then it's Bellatrix. Bellatrix can't beat Voldemort either. Yes, she can. And they talk about it in the books. And they talk about it in every single... In, they talk about it in seven. You think you think Molly Weasley can beat Bellatrix, Mad-Eye, and Voldemort? Is she going to be in the finals? Just because Molly won because Bellatrix was... Like, off guard. She wasn't prepared for Molly to be even a tough You're fight. You're using anecdotal evidence from the books that are like that no one knows about. And one of the main fight scenes in Deathly Hallows Part 2 is this All fight. All of the Death, Death Eaters did not follow because they were scared of Voldemort. They were scared of Bellatrix. Yeah, because she's psycho. That doesn't mean she's more powerful in a fight. She's Bellatrix was a machine at the end. It's crazy to take the person who killed her and think that that's her level. Bellatrix should easily come out of this bracket in the top four. No. No. You're... You... What are you reading? Because you're slowing down. No, no, I'm just trying you're, to find you're something. You're clearly finding stuff that doesn't help no, me it fucking No, that. it's just saying she can beat Harry. I agree she can beat Harry. Beat Voldemort. This is the most ridiculous thing. I, I can't... I'm not giving this to you. He this got murdered on a broomstick. She got murdered in a huge war where she was fighting six other battles. And she no, killed... No, she didn't. Bellatrix got beaten by a... By a, by a middle-aged mother of eight. Or whatever the frick. Yeah, it's eight or nine. This is so stupid. I'm skipping it. I'm coming back to it. I'm coming back to it. We're what do you mean? You can't... We're coming back to it. Peter Pettigrew, Grindelwald. That one's easy. Yep. Grindelwald. Yep. Harry Potter, Molly Weasley. Harry. Really? Brother. But you're saying because she could be Harry and Molly. Beats. You just said someone in the top four should be Bellatrix. And the character that literally we see beat her. All of these fights are hypothetical. We have one that is clear. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. But. All right. Like, let's do. Let's do an MCU fight. Right? Who are you taking? Corvus Glaive or Vision?
vision. But Corvus Clay f***s him up in Infinity War. Absolutely destroys him in Infinity War. Because he catches him off guard. And then he's stabbed. Exactly. He's stabbed. And then he's just limping throughout the whole movie. So this is my point. Is I don't. This isn't a. I don't think. Who can you catch off guard fight? But that's what happened. Exactly. So this isn't that. So then Molly. Molly strictly won off of, you know, surprise. I. I read this wrong. It says Mad-Eye Moody is more powerful than Voldemort. Alistair Moody was a true force of nature. Yes, he did lose his life to Lord Voldemort. On the, again, that was an example of like a, a sneak attack. But does that does not mean he was less powerful than him. Mad-Eye was, after all, the wizard who put half the Death Eaters of Azkaban in their cells. He was a member of both the Order of the Phoenix and an extremely talented, ruthless Auror, descended from a long line of wizards who fought dark forces. That is Mad-Eye's... That is, he's him. I'm telling you, it's Bellatrix. You think Mad Eye's gonna lose to Molly Weasley? No, no. But uh, you, this is the dumbest argument you've ever made. No, it's not. Yeah, because you know you've made some other dumb. You've said some this dumb crap. This is a crap. good argument. I think that Harry. You Potter haven't thing. given me any examples other than you're like, oh well, one time they said she's crazy. Yeah, dog. We all know she's crazy. Yeah, dog. She's crazy enough to let her guard down to lose to Weasley. Yeah, dog. It happens. Mad-Eye. I'm not letting you put Bellatrix through over Mad-Eye. I'm well, not doing it. You said it. we'll come back to it, so we Fine. will come back to it. But again. You're putting Harry over Molly? Harry beats Molly. I'm going to I'm gonna just make that adult Harry because he becomes an R. Draco Malfoy Hagrid. Hagrid. Uh, Professor McGonagall Hermione, who would win in a fight? You're going to say McGonagall? I'm going to say Hermione. No, you're not. Hermione was the most skilled student in all of Hogwarts the entire... And everything in the books would not even happen. Harry and Ron would not be alive without Hermione. Doesn't matter, McGonagall. When do we see McGonagall fight? In seven. And she f takes down Snape and the two, the two asshole siblings at once. At Does one. she really? Yes! Dude, at once. She she kills the I, two siblings and, and... Doesn't Snape just run away? Yes! Versus Snape. <laughs> it's, it's badass. It's a great scene. Now, there is an argument to be made that Snape helped out. Let Snape also kill right. them. But it doesn't matter. Like, McGonagall's a f tank. The Order of the Phoenix just shows up? That's hard. Yeah, Snape's not going to kill her, though. You know? No. Snape did that. Snape did that. I'm not giving you that, but... <sighs> McGonagall's a machine. Hermione's a machine. The whole point of the books is to show, and the movies, is to show how good she is at everything. McGonagall, dog. Oh, this is the worst. Last one. Oh, no! <laughs> this stuff. It's Dobby and Voldemort. That's way harder than it should be. <laughs> Prime Voldemort, it's Voldemort, but th this isn't, this is, you know, no nose Voldemort, falling apart Voldemort. Yeah. Ooh. Just because Voldemort's more of a main character, yeah, I feel like I have to Voldemort, get Voldemort, but, but like but Dob Dobby's a machine. House elves. Dobby all of them. and Hagrid probably shouldn't be on this list, but it's fine. Okay, we're back to Bellatrix, Mad Eye. Bellatrix, I'm not budging. I don't know what to do about this. We're at a standstill. Bellatrix isn't falling off her broom. No, she's just getting murdered in front of a bunch of kids by a mother. Yeah, all of the kids were involved as well. She's a stay-at-home mom that cooks, and she just yeah. So she's got nothing. Her. She's got nothing better to do than be better at dueling. Than be yeah, I'm sure dueling. that's what Molly Weasley's doing at the borough is practicing yeah, brother, dueling in the backyard. They, what's that field for? Bellatrix, her whole entire persona was trying to kill people, and she couldn't even do it to Molly. Get out of here. She killed like a ton of people. She killed Fred, right? You're not moving on this? You, After all I've said. Bellatrix should be top four. I went into this knowing Bellatrix was top four. What? I don't understand. Right? It's probably, it's Grindelwald, Dumbledore, Bellatrix. Mad-Eye. McGonagall, Hermione. Yeah, McGonagall might be in there. And McGonagall versus Mad-Eye, McGonagall. It's the same two. McGonagall's a machine. You have to look at what their characters are meant to be. It, 
Bellatrix is meant to be crazy. McGonagall's meant to be a teacher. Mad Eye is meant to be someone who fights bad guys. That's his whole. That's who he is. That's his job. Yeah. Mad Eye. <laughs> it's, it's McGonagall and it's Bellatrix. I can't. I can't. I, I, uh. Do we have a Harry Potter expert that we know? Let's. We'll call. We're gonna call Matt and whatever he picks. Whatever he picks. That was a great idea. Here is our resident Harry Potter expert, Matt. Um, Matt, we need you to settle two disputes for us that we can not, just not get over because you're our resident expert. Yeah. Who is winning in a fight, Professor McGonagall or Hermione? Uh, Professor McGonagall. Okay. Yes! That, uh, that one I'm fine with. That's All fine. right, here's the one that's really the point of contention. Okay. Who is winning in a fight, Bellatrix Lestrange or Mad-Eye Moody? Ooh. Ooh, that is a really tough one. That's an interesting question. Would Snape beat uh, Bellatrix? Because I feel like, oh, that is tough. Um, I honestly think that it is a 51% uh, winning percentage goes to uh, Mad-Eye Moody. No! Yeah! Right, that is correct. No! 51, 51. No. I think I think they could do a hundred game, a hundred duels, and Mad Eye Moody would have would fifty one. Yeah, I mean, I think right. yeah, I think Bellatrix is no. re really powerful, but Bellatrix loses to Molly Weasley number one, and number two, Mad Eye Moody is the guy. He's the most famous R of all time. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree. Actually. All right. Damn it, Matt, thank you, you screwed Matt. me. All right, thank you, Matt. You're our resident Harry Potter expert, Matt. A round of applause. Yeah, there you go. Thank Woo. you, buddy. Bye. Back up at the top, Dumbledore, Severus Snape. Dumbledore. Dumbledore. Snape is pretty powerful, though. But Snape kills him. <laughs> yeah, because Dumbledore literally asked him to. Yeah. Mad-Eye Moody. Grindelwald. 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 Harry Potter Hagrid. 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 McGonagall Voldemort. Voldemort. I want to go McGonagall there. Dumbledore Grindelwald. Dumbledore. Yep. Wow, Hagrid. Grindelwald should make it through. That's a shame that he get got booted there. Oh, he's in the he's in the semifinals. Oh, he's in the top four. Yeah, this is this is fun. Oh, oh, Dumbledore, Grindelwald, Hagrid, Voldemort. Okay, those are our four. Yeah, Voldemort. Voldemort. Yep, yeah. and then Dumbledore. And then Dumbledore for the win. Cool. Cool. Thank you, Matt. Damn it, that was good. Damn it. Sad that you're wrong again. Bellatrix should absolutely be in there. Damn it. Bellatrix loses to Molly Weasley. I can't even get like that mad about it. I'm just defeated. This has ruined my day. I'm wet. I'm going to go dry off.